Well, I've got two engines to compare, a Tillotson and a Predator, both 212cc engines. I've had this Tillotson for a couple of months now, and it is a lovely 7.5 horsepower engine stock. I've got this unlabeled can over here. I'm wondering what's inside of it. Oh, look! Worms! I'm going to be showing you some of the details of what I've gone through with this engine. Bink, and I really appreciate the support and responsiveness when I'm asking about these engines. Over a year ago, something came out that the first generation of the Tilton 2 and 2R was about 12 horsepower. I was actually told up front right away it is not a 12 horsepower engine. It is a beautiful 7.5 horsepower engine though, and I'll give you the dyno results shortly between the two compared side by side. Try to get those fast because a lot of people are here thinking that horsepower is everything. Everything. Bink, but horsepower is not everything. Where the Tillotson may be cranking out seven and a half horsepower, just above actually, it's cranking out a lot more torque. And that thing revs to the moon. So it's got a lot of great RPMs out of there and a great power band. The Predator has a few things that may be needed to actually come up to the equivalent of the Tillotson. But I'm going to open up the internals on the Tillotson next to the Predator and show you what's going on with the engine block comparison. Both of them considered Honda GX2 clones so you can use a lot of the same bolt-on parts so what do we have here we have horsepower and dyno results are going to be coming up then we've gonna then we're gonna have a parts list what the difference is between what are you really getting out of that Tillotson with the higher cost to it and then comparison for what can you do with the engines going forward for some people, horsepower is everything. And I put these two engines side by side on a mini bike and a go kart, and it turns out that the uh, memory card was full. So I got some great footage for you today of me sitting here at this table and maybe a side clip here or there of the bike and a still picture. But I really did have it on, on these, uh, these different vehicles. Um, things happen. Let's get those horsepower results right away. I did have them both on a dyno. That is for certain because I've been working with these two engines for a couple of months. The Tillotson Generation 2 looked like it had a few problems. I'll go over those later on. I'm guessing that uh, it was rushed in the manufacture, uh, in the uh, assembly process a little bit. I'll go over a few details why I could not compare the two engines out of box. And instead, this is going to be more of a stock type comparison. When the Predator engine comes to you, this is going to be a 6.3 horsepower at 3,200 RPM with about a max of 3,600 RPM. When you remove a throttle stop screw on this engine, and most of the comparison results I'm going to be talking about when you pull this throttle stop screw back, you can get 7.3 horsepower at 4,200 RPM with a max of 4,650 RPM before your governor starts kicking in. Some people get up to about 5,000 RPM out of the box. Uh, this is 6.65 horsepower is what I was rating at at 4,200 RPM with a max of 5,200 RPM. Pull back the throttle stop screw. There isn't much difference. I'm going to give you two horsepower ratings, but I want you to take a look at where that curve is coming in. 6.81 horsepower at 4,300 RPM with a max of 5,700 RPM. But that wasn't where the most of the power was coming at, was around 3,600 RPM. So actually, the bulk of the torque and the power for this engine is going to be a lower RPM than this, which is why it's a great race engine. It gets you up to speed really fast and then maintains and cruises at uh, faster RPM. 7.61 horsepower at 3,600 RPM. When you're using these engines right out of the box and you're thinking, wow, this has so much power, it's comparable to like a stage one or oh, not quite a stage two Predator, and I'll go over into some of the parts in a moment here. The Tillotson definitely feels like it's got a lot of power to it. It is definitely a power plant. If you're wondering about how it's compared to some of the other Tillotson engines, go ahead and check up on Tillotson Ireland's website. It has one graph of one of their engines rating around 8 horsepower, very nice engine, and then a 212 E, which I believe right now was posted at about 7 horsepower, but might be making a little bit more than that. Let's get into parts just a little bit, shall we? We shall. If you want an adjustable carburetor, the Tillotson comes with a PK-1B, which is an adjustable carburetor. If you want a very similar adjustable option with the Predator, it may cost you $10.99 to get one online. Air filter boxes. 
The Tillotson comes with what is called a high flow air filter box to give you a little bit more room. The Predator comes with some sort of a sponge pad looking thing, which a little bit of a secret, 33 millimeter air intake, for whatever reason actually fits directly inside of there, but actually does work as a high flow. Fits right in there, nice and snug. The Tillotson also comes with a much better flywheel. I'm gonna show you that coming up in just a moment here. flywheel side of things, taking a look at the Tillotson. The Tillotson has a 10,000 RPM rated flywheel. <clears throat> uh, the Predator uh, flywheel has been known to have parts disappear off of it in a grenade-like fashion above 6,000 RPM. Some people will run 7,000 RPM. This little magnet is not machined in and uh, Bit of a grenade when you start spinning higher RPMs. With a stock Predator though, you do not have to worry about it, shouldn't be a problem. If you want to upgrade your flywheel, add $70 to the cost of your Predator engine, and you can get a PVL flywheel that's rated at 17,000 RPMs. The high flow intake for the Tillotson is gonna be a lit little bit better for intake than the Predator's, and last but not least, the gas cap. The gas cap on the Predator is actually a little bit nicer than the gas cap on the Tillotson. The Predator has a nice little chain. For All right, I want you engines to get in a little bit closer. There you go. Don't be shy now, don't be shy. All right, let's go in for a little bit of a close up. And we see some additional supports on the Tillotson block here, additional support on the Tillotson block here, additional support on the Tillotson block here, and here, very importantly, down here, a very nice block support and the Predator. The Predator doesn't really have any of these. Now a couple pictures I've seen floating around out there. Uh, be careful with how much compression you're going to be putting into these Predator engines. What does this mean for the block itself? Likely be able to put a lot more pressure and stress inside of the Tillotson block. Seems like a good thing to be paying for. Let's check out those internals. We have one governor up there and a governor over here, and pretty much they look the same. Let's take a look at what's going on in here. This is a low oil sensor in the Predator. The Tillotson, as a race engine, states they don't need it because it's a race engine. Hopefully you're doing all right with your oil and maintaining that. So the big difference here right off, you can tell in the blocks, one is quite a bit sturdier and stronger, the Tillotson, Quite a bit sturdier and stronger looking than the Predator. All right, going side by side on the valves, and really there isn't going to be much difference that I see to these. It looks like you can interchange valve covers and rockers and quite a few other parts in there, which is really nice because if you want a stronger block and you already have a Predator, but you want to swap some parts, you can actually order the blocks, I believe, by themselves. Let's get the head off of both of these so you can see what's going on with the piston and the valves. Got the heads off and we're taking a look at these pistons. I did some measurements just to confirm, make sure that I knew what I was going to be looking at here. We are looking at exhaust valve of 25 millimeter on both of them and an intake valve of 27 millimeter on both of them. So there isn't going to be much change right there. Now over here the Tillotson piston is going to be a very flat surface which gives it a very good compression and then the uh, Predator compared to it the Predator non-hemi which we're comparing and looking at right now is not a flat top and people will actually take the hemi version of the Predator's piston and put it inside of the cylinder for the non-hemi. One last thing to note right down here you're going to notice it's rounded where your push rods come up versus it's flat. And right here, there's a little bit weaker spot 
and on the block with the Tillotson simply because it was made flat. So, give you a little bit more close up from the top. You can see Predator side by side. The governor linkage almost looks identical. Linkage in general was about identical. All right, well, I'm waiting on a few parts to see what can go in both of these engines. A lot of the things line up. The bolts are the same between quite a few different places in them. I'm going to be building up both of these engines. So subscribe, check out some of the builds I'm doing with these two engines and the differences there. And I guess we're going to get into the last thing that uh, really makes something enjoyable, which is after purchase support, which is kind of a big deal. With the Predator engine, if there's a problem, people take it back to the store. And the stores are around quite a bit. The engine's been around for a little while. People blow them up and they move on, they get another one. Um, the Tillotson has a no return policy. The Tillotson, I believe, was a bit rushed coming over uh, from uh, where it was manufactured. A few things going on that may have contributed to that. Tillotson over the past year and their distribution in United States Tillotson have been really good to me. Very responsive. Um, up front with things over a year ago, some people were saying that the Tillotson uh, 212cc, the R version, was 12 horsepower out of the box. I contacted them and they flat out said, no, it's not 12 horsepower out of the box. Uh, with that said, the spark plug wire uh, was smashed behind the cradle of where it was supposed to be. The linkage, yeah, the linkage right here was actually reversed on how it is in every single other engine that I have. So I reversed that linkage because it was catching on a, uh, a screw, pulling and it bent. So that was another thing. But a spring backwards and something that I can just pull out, not, not big deals. It was having one big issue with it though, and that's where I saw good support coming from Tillerson. Yes, there, is no, there are no returns from it. It's a newer engine, newer to manufacturing, newer coming out, and I really do like the block and what they're doing with it in a 10,000 RPM standard flywheel. Not too many people go over 10,000 RPMs. If you do, you're gonna want something bigger and better anyway. Um, they actually took back the carburetor that came on this stock. Uh, because I was getting backfire problems, gave me a brand new exactly stock equivalent and a new spark plug just to take test that out. It turns out that what happened is one of the valves was simply not seated properly. The intake valve on the push rod was not seated properly on the rocker, which was keeping the intake valve open a bit, and there was some backfire problems. They sent me the specifications for valve lash, and uh, I set the, the valve lash properly because there was a little bit of a problem with the compression release, and I'm about to swear in this clip here. Ah, fuck. But, uh, slap my wrist a little bit. So as soon as I got that, that uh, rocker seated properly with the valve, uh, this engine was running a lot better. I was able to get good results on the dyno. It, it really is a nice engine. So overall cost on these two engines, side by side, it actually cost me $270 to have it shipped out to me because cost of shipping was pretty big. The Harbor Freight store is miles away but it was about $5 in gas there and back. With the coupon cost me $112 engine tax and gas money. So quite a difference, almost three times the cost. Uh, if you don't have the coupon, you're looking probably about twice the cost, but if you're gonna be doing some larger builds and you want a 212cc uh, engine, the tilts and block has a lot more to offer on it and the piston top that you're getting stock has a bit more to offer with it. Some of the other parts that you're working with here, flywheel, it's, you're really getting those parts without having to spend additional money. I guess that's really it and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a great day. This is the GSXS 1000.
hands up, no hands up. Even a baby could do it. Nah, there's some tubs.